Well, um, of the 16,400 hydrogen bombs in the world, Russia and America are 94%. They're the only nations that can destroy life on Earth. America has a first strike winnable nuclear war policy, which means that they will kill the Russian missiles before they're launched, knock off Moscow, and win the nuclear war. Billions of people dying is called collateral damage by the Pentagon. They don't care about people. Um, and the Russians have responded in kind. Um, because of what's happening in the Ukraine now, uh, Russia and America are confronting each other militarily for the first time since the Cold War ended. Putin has put his nuclear arsenal on a higher than normal state of alert. Almost certainly Russia, America has too. And they're both conducting very belligerent nuclear war exercises close to each other's borders. Um, it's extremely dangerous. The New York Times has been promoting the fact that it's all Putin's fault. It's not. America put in Poroshenko, who's a puppet of America. Um, Poroshenko is working with a lot of Nazis, ex-Nazis, who killed a huge number of Jews during the war. Um, the people in eastern Ukraine are Russian-speaking. They don't like this new regime at all, and Putin's been supporting them. Uh, but it's terribly dangerous because uh, any aberration or human error or mistake or increased anxiety or people hacking into the early warning system could launch a nuclear holocaust and cause the extinction of almost all life on Earth, and it could happen tomorrow. And I tell my family when I go away, and I've, I'm traveling at the moment, I'll, I'll be home if there's not a nuclear war, and I'm serious about this. Furthermore, there are 15 nuclear reactors in the Ukraine, and if you have a conventional war in a country with nuclear reactors, you could easily produce a meltdown like Chernobyl, which is in the Ukraine. So from two perspectives, things are terribly dangerous, and the media is simply not covering this at all. It's imperative that the media uh, broadcast what I've just said and much more to the ordinary people of the world because unless Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack <laughs> understand this, there'll be no political movement for the politicians to do anything at all. There's just been a non-proliferation treaty conference at the United Nations talking about the humanitarian um, and the existential threats of nuclear war. 106 countries have voted to abolish nuclear weapons and there was a big pushback by the five or six nuclear nations that they won't do anything. These people are in fact sociopaths. They have no moral conscience and by accident, by design, by hackers, by all sorts of things, uh, we could wipe out not just the human race but most life on the planet. How dare they? How dare they? And the only way we'll change this is through the media. The media is determining the fate of the earth. And as President Jefferson said, an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. I've led three revolutions, one against the French nuclear tests in the Pacific in Australia, once against, one against uranium mining in Australia where the union stopped it for five years, and I was really one of the leaders of the nuclear weapons freeze in America where over five years we convinced 80% of Americans that nuclear war is bad for their health. They don't have to worry about the communists, they have to worry about annihilation. And so it's all been done through education, through the media. Well, these conferences are very important, the real truth about health, uh, only if they can be broadcast far and wide. It's quite a small audience, but it can be propagated and perpetuated through social media and indeed through mainstream media. Well, I'll start off by saying um, Einstein said the splitting of the atom changed everything, all reality, save man's mode of thinking. Thus we drift towards unparalleled catastrophe. And they started peaceful nuclear power because they wanted to avert people's anxiety about nuclear weapons and they thought that that would do the trick. But nuclear power plants are kind of like bombs. They can explode, uh, like Chernobyl did. But the, when you put uranium in a reactor, it becomes one billion times more radioactive. Um, over 200 radioactive elements are made, man-made, all of which are highly carcinogenic. 
if you live near a reactor, especially if you're a child, you have double the risk of getting leukemia and a high risk of getting solid cancers. Um, but the radioactive waste that's produced 30 tonnes every year from every nuclear power plant in the world will last uh, for a million years, must be isolated from the ecosphere for a million years, which is a physical and scientific impossibility. And over time, this material will leak into the water and concentrate in our food, fish, meat, milk, vegetables. And you can imagine generations hence waking up in the morning, their babies already being born deformed because plutonium and other elements cross the placenta, damaging cells that are going to form the brain or the right arm like thalidomide. Uh, children getting cancer at the age of six instead of 70 because they're exposed to radiation in utero and early in life. The women's breast milk radioactive so epidemics of cancer and leukemia and genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis. That's what nuclear power means. Nuclear power is a cancer industry and it's a bomb industry, period, because it makes um, 250 kilos of plutonium a year. You need only five kilos to make a bomb and plutonium lasts for a quarter of a million years. So you might sell a nuclear power plant to a country that's relatively stable and in 10 years get a crazy dictator who makes bombs. So <laughs> nuclear power will, could precipitate a nuclear war. It's their bomb factories and their cancer factories. Nuclear power plants are bomb factories and cancer factories. There are over 400 nuclear power plants in the world, all of which are at risk for having accidents uh, by human error, by mechanical area, error, all of them. Um, no one ever uh, predicted that there would be three meltdowns in Fukushima, three. They'll never get those molten cores out from the earth. They're so radioactive, no one can go near them. Every day since the accident, over 400 tons of highly radioactive water have been emptied into the Pacific Ocean for the last four years. That will go on for the rest of time. The fish are going to become more and more radioactive. It's an absolute disaster and there's no solution. They'll never fix it, ever. Um, but, you know, Indian Point is just 35 miles from Manhattan. The uh, terrorists who are going to fly into, were going, who did the World Trade Towers, were going to fly into the Indian Point reactors, but they thought they were protected by missiles, so they didn't. If they had, that would have been the end of the financial capital of the world. There would be hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of cases of cancer starting to appear and leukemia. So th the truth is that all of them are vulnerable to meltdowns and accidents. The Irish Sea is the most polluted sea in the world, and I read about that when I was writing an article for the New England Journal of Medicine because of Sellafield. It's just obscene. There's plutonium on the beaches, uh, near Sellafield in England and also over in Ireland. And I've seen people in Ireland swimming in the Irish Sea and eating fish from the Irish Sea. What you need to know though is it takes from four to 80 years to develop cancer once you've eaten radioactive food and the elements stay in various organs like bone or liver or lung, irradiating cells, changing regulatory genes and then the cell starts to reproduce in an unregulated fashion producing trillions of cells and that's a cancer. So um, that's the hidden ace up the sleeve of the nuclear industry that it takes so long for cancers to evolve after people have been contaminated. When there's a meltdown like Chernobyl, um, for 10 days the wind changed 360 degrees and there was a huge fire which lifted or lofted the radioactive elements into the stratosphere and it went all, all around the world. But the truth is 40% of Europe is now radioactive and will remain so for hundreds of years. And what happens is that the cesium, which is like potassium, concentrates by orders of magnitude in the vegetables or the grass, and then the cows eat the grass, concentrates ten thousands of times in the milk, and then concentrates further in human bodies so that there's what's called bioconcentration in the food chain compared to the basic level in the ground. And, that, and so I don't buy European food. I don't know what batch is radioactive and what is not. I don't want to eat radioactive food and later get cancer. Uh, and uh, also there are farms in Britain. The lambs are so radioactive. The government went to them and said, you have to close your farms down. And they said, well, for how long? And 
and they said 100 years. It's not 100 years, it's 300 years that cesium lasts. But there are lots and lots of other elements. Um, food in Fukushima is extremely radioactive. Uh, South Korea and Taiwan have banned importing radioactive food from, from Japan. Never eat Japanese food again because you don't know what's radioactive and what's not. Rice, miso, seaweed, fish, uh, vegetables, uh, and yet Japan's promoting food from Fukushima all over the world. Hillary Clinton signed a deal after the accident when she was Secretary of State that America would keep importing radioactive food, well, food from Japan, much of which is radioactive. Uh, don't buy second-hand Japanese cars, they're likely to be very radioactive. They're sending them to Russia, Russia's sending them back because the filters for the engines and the and the passenger apartments um, are full of radioactive elements. Tokyo is very radioactive. Soil from Tokyo, some of it's so radioactive it would be designated to be buried in a radioactive waste facility in America. There's a huge cover-up in Japan and Prime Minister Abe has passed a secrecy law so that anyone who writes about it honestly can be jailed for 10 years. The doctors have been told that they shouldn't tell their patients their symptoms are related to radiation. There's a huge cover-up. Already about 117 children under the age of 18 in the Fukushima prefecture have developed thyroid cancer. The incidence in that particular cohort of people is one in a million. And that's the tip of the iceberg. Thyroid cancers develop early, then we'll see leukemia, and then we'll see all sorts of solid cancers. Already over a million people have died from cancer and other diseases as a result of Chernobyl. Over a million. Translate that to Japan. I would say that m many of the fish near uh, Fukushima on the east coast are, are radioactive. And they're going to, they've got <laughs> over a thousand huge tanks of radioactive water which they're isolating from the reactors. But those tanks are only built to last five years and they're thinking of emptying the tanks out now and anyway into the Pacific. And what happens, <laughs> what happens when these radioactive water gets in the Pacific, and it is every day anyway, um, it concentrates first by tens or thousands of times in the algae, and then in the crustaceans, then in the little fish, then the big fish, then us. And fish swim thousands of miles. And you can't taste, smell, or see radiation when you eat fish. You don't say, mm, I can taste the cesium in this fish. It's invisible. Cryptogenic, silent killer. Yeah, for sure, many of them would be. But you'd have to, you can't guess, you have to measure it. And the Irish government should be measuring the fish in the Irish Sea and the water so people know they shouldn't swim in certain areas or eat the fish. Excellent. I think that's everything. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. God, that's horrible. You should show Rich the whole thing. Yeah, yeah that's we a real eye-opener. Yeah, we will. I didn't know any of that. Well, yeah. you see, you know, if you don't know it, who, nobody.